Hello. Welcome to our today's video presentation. This will be about complex numbers. The idea of inventing new numbers might seem odd to you, but, think about this example. A group of mathematicians known as the Pythagoreans, proved over 2000 years ago that the equation x squared equals 2 has no solutions that are rational numbers. You may be thinking that the solutions are square root of 2 and negative square root of 2, but, at the time, those numbers had not been defined, so the Pythagoreans, invented the new kind of numbers, the irrational numbers, like square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. Now consider the similar equation x squared equals negative 1. To be a solution, a number has to result in negative 1 when squared. But we know that the square of any real number cannot be negative. So again a new type of number is invented, a number whose square is negative 1. The concept of square roots of negative numbers had been kicked around for a few centuries, but in 1748, the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, pronounced Euler, used the letter I to represent a square root of negative 1. From this simple beginning, it is possible to build a new system of numbers called the complex number system. Before we continue, let's see if some of you knows those people who uses complex numbers in real life. Here is a hint. The navigation system in the space shuttle depends on complex numbers. So, what is a complex number? The number i, whose square is negative 1, is called the imaginary unit. Complex numbers are defined in terms of the imaginary unit. i is an imaginary number. Or a complex number. Or an unreal number. The terms used are interchangeable. In some observations, in the beginning there are counting numbers. And then we needed negative numbers. And the rational numbers. And the irrational numbers. And these are what we know as the real numbers. So, where do the unreal numbers fit in? Actually, we have always used them. 6 is not just 6. It is 6 plus 0 i. Complex numbers incorporate all numbers. A number such as 3 i is a purely imaginary number. A number such as 6 is a purely real number. 6 plus 3 i is a complex number. x plus i y is the general form of a complex number. If x plus i y equals 6 minus 4 i, then x equals 6 and y equals negative 4. The real part of 6 minus 4 i is 6 and the imaginary part is negative 4 i. Now, let's go to the powers of i. As we all know, i is equal to i, which is the square root of negative 1. Next, is i squared, is equal to negative 1. Then, i raised to 3, is equal to, i squared times i which is, negative 1 times i, giving us, negative i. Also, i raised to 4, is equal to, i squared times i squared, which is, negative 1 times negative 1, which is actually, i raised to 4, is equal to 1. And, if we repeat the process, we can observe that there is a repeating pattern, coming from these first four powers of i. You can see that it will continue to exhibit the same sequence i, negative 1, negative i, and 1, every 4 powers of i. This allows us to generate values of i with big exponents. Like, i, raised to 333. This can be written as the quantity i, raised to 4, raised to 83, then multiplied by i, raised to 1. Notice that i raised to 4 is just equal to 1. So, if we raise this again to 83, it will just remain 1. And 1 times i, is equal to just, i. Similarly, i, raised to 1995. This can be written as the quantity i, raised to 4, raised to 498, then multiplied by i, raised to 3. Notice again that i raised to 4 is just equal to 1. So, if we raise this again to 498, it will just remain 1 and 1 times negative i, is equal to just, negative i. The next example, i, raised to 64. This can be written as the quantity i, raised to 4, raised to 16, and this, is just equal to, 1. Lastly, 
i raised to 94. This can be written as the quantity i raised to 4 raised to 23, then multiplied by i raised to 2. Notice again that i raised to 4 is just equal to 1. So, if we raise this again to 23, it will just remain 1. And 1 times negative 1 is equal to just negative 1. Now, we see that if we divide the exponent by 4, we can say that if there is no remainder, the answer is 1. If the remainder is 1, the answer is i. If the remainder is 2, the answer is negative 1. And lastly, if the remainder is 3, the answer is negative i. Now, let's check comprehension. You may pause the video for you to have more time in solving. For more complex number operations, I have prepared some worked out exercises. For number 1, we need to simplify the square root of negative 4. Here, we can rewrite negative 4 as 4 times negative 1. Then, equivalently, 4 is 2 squared and negative 1 is i squared. Since both squares are inside the square root, in simplifying this, the squares will disappear if we try to put them out of the square root. For number 2, we need to simplify the sum of 3i plus 4i. Just like in algebra where we have 3x plus 4x is equal to 7x, we can add these up and get 3i plus 4i equals 7i. For number 3, we need to simplify 3i plus 8 minus 4i minus 5. Combining like terms, we can have 3i minus 4i plus 8 minus 5. This will give us a final answer of negative i plus 3. For number 4, we have to find the product of the quantity 2i plus 5 times the quantity 2i minus 5. Remember the special products we had in algebra, where we can have the product of the sum and difference of two quantities, as the square of the first term minus the square of the second term. Here we will have the square of 2i minus the square of 5. And when we simplify this, we can have 4i squared minus 25. Simplifying further, where i squared is equal to negative 1, we will have negative 4 minus 25. And our final answer will be negative 29. Now, let's go to division of complex numbers. Here we have to solve, 3 divided by the quantity 2i minus 5. The trick here is to make the denominator real. But how do we do that? If you will recall our solution to number 4, we were able to get a real number when we multiplied the quantity 2i plus 5 times the quantity 2i minus 5. And we can use that here to make the denominator real. We only need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of 2i minus 5. Then we can continue by simplifying the numerator as 6i plus 15. And simplifying the denominator as 4i squared minus 25, which is negative 29. We can rewrite this as negative 15 over 29 minus negative 6 over 29 i. Finally, we will see the solution of a quadratic equation, written as a complex number. In solving the quadratic, x squared minus 6x plus 13. We use the quadratic formula. I hope you still remember how to use the quadratic formula. Please tell me if you forgot already so that I can give you links of tutorials on how to use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons below. Also, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload my next videos. Please share this video to your friends to help them learn more in math. Have a nice